Okay, so it seems that the security authentication failure rate command does not work. So why? Why doesn't it work? Well, I've got a dun 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 conspiracy theory that I, I think addresses this. Now, I'm uh, totally speculating here, but I, I think that this command was either never implemented or it was implemented and then, you know, deprecated. The reason I, I think this is, is that if you look at the uh, documentation for security authentication failure rate and then um, say the login block for command which is part of the login block feature set you'll see that they rolled out about the same time they're in the 12.3 code and login block again I have a, a set of videos on that that goes into that in excruciating detail it, it it accomplishes everything that it seems that security authentication failure rate sets out to do. This might have been something that was stillborn, or maybe this was the first iteration of what eventually became login block. But login block gives you the ability to change a lot of those parameters that you can't in the security authentication failure rate, you know, such as the window, the lockout time. You can even go ahead and specify what's going to be locked out. It, it's it's a much more powerful feature set. So I mean, that's that's my crack um, conspiracy theory is that this was probably either stillborn or it was you know implemented, and then the login block feature was just so much better that they've just been you know, pulling this out. So it, it probably will not make it into the newer versions of um, iOS. But again, that's just me talking on my butt. I could be completely wrong. I'm just a, a dude on the internet. So uh, yeah, take that into consideration when you're, uh, when you're evaluating your sources. Well, I promised you some hot CLI action and we're gonna get to that here shortly. Showing you real quickly what our network's gonna look like in this case. And really, we're gonna be just using two routers here. So R1 we won't be using other than to uh, launch our authentication attempts. R2 is going to be a 36 40, I believe, and it's going to be running 12.3 code, and then R3 is going to be a 37.25 running 12.4 code. The reason I've got two different routers running different code is just to show you that this damn thing doesn't work on either one of them. So let's jump to the CLI. Okay, so we're on the CLI, and the first thing I do is on R2 and R3, um, let me, oops, not do. So you can see that on um, R2, this is a 3640, and we're running 12.3.14 T7. And then R3, after it. <laughs> hey, hey, not show run, doofus. Okay, so here we're running a uh, 3725 with 12.4.14.T10 code. Um, and what I'm going to do on these two routers is I'm going to configure a username of Cisco Jim, the password of Cisco. Same thing, uh, enable password. I'm just going to set, we probably won't use this, but um, just be complete and now under the VTY lines what I'm saying here is that if you're logging in from you know via v, uh, VTY so via Telnet basically go ahead and for a login use a local username database which is going to be Cisco Jim with a password of Cisco and let's do the same thing for the console line don't think that's the same. Oh, yeah, okay. So, here's a quick shortcut that you can use. Um, if you issue the do command, it's weird that you have to do the do command here, but show history will show you a history of the um, your commands. And when you're on, when you're in configuration mode, if you do do show history, It'll show, I believe, and you can configure this to, to do more or less, um, just like most things in Cisco. I think it shows you the last 15 commands. Anywho, it's a really good way to, um, if you're going to be doing the same configuration on multiple devices, just go ahead and copy that. So when we pop over to R3 here, you don't have to watch me stumble through typing this. Just paste it. Booyah. Well, you've got the same configuration on both routers now. 
So the next thing we're going to do after we get out of um, configuration mode, I'll go ahead and write this. Do the same thing on R2. And I'll pop on over to R1. And R1 is basically going to be our hub. Uh, and you can see we're connected to R2 and R3 and using the the IP addressing scheme that you've probably seen a billion times if you've watched these videos. So let's just make sure that we can ping R1 and R2. And we can. So again, just in the interest of showing I have no rabbits up my sleeve, let's go ahead and make sure that we can tell that to these guys. So Cisco Jim with a password Cisco, and I think I might have typed that wrong. That could be my fault. Okay. C I S C O. There you go. And Cisco for the enable too. So we'll log out of there, and then we'll try R three here. It's funny because doing these videos, you figure out what you can and can't do at the same time. I have a hard time typing and talking at the same time, um, which shouldn't surprise me because I used to play in a band, and uh, a bad band, obviously, because I didn't make that my career. <laughs> and kids, it's a bad career choice, trust me. Um, but I could never sing and play at the same time either, So, which was actually a good thing because if you... If you think my voice is annoying, my speaking voice, man, you should hear me sing. Okay, so we've proven we got connectivity and we can log in using uh, Telnet from R1. Let's go over to R2, go back into configuration mode, and now let's uh, configure security authentication failure rate. So, and when we go through this step through this, we might as well just take a look at the iOS help for each step. So you can see there's uh, two choices for security. There's a um, Security authentication, which we'll be using, and security passwords, and that's a uh, that's a topic for a different day. And with authentication, see, this is where you once you get past that first fork, there's really no choices after this. I mean, you failure, you have to type. Um, rate, you have to type. You would have thunk, thunk, that uh, they could have made that into failure hyphen rate and just saved you some keystrokes but oh well uh, so let's see here and here we can see that we have a uh, this is the one argument that we provide and we can choose between 2 and 1024 in the documentation there is a note that in the older versions of iOS you could at one point specify one for this but reading it um, it seemed that well, it's hard to believe this damn thing ever worked but it, maybe it did at one time because it has a note there that says that if you specified one, it would take it, but it wouldn't log. So, you know, and that kind of points back to the log actually being generated if it equals the uh, authentication rate. I'm dwelling into dwelling. Dwelling is not a word. I'm delving into things that really don't matter as we shall soon see. Anywho, let's go ahead and specify three for our authentication failure rate. And we saw this on the slides that, you know, it says that within um, a one minute window is what this is gonna use. So, and you notice here that you don't have uh, CR here. So you do, if, if I hit enter here, incomplete command. So I up arrowed and I'm going to say log. So now we've got security authentication failure log. Um, our security authentication failure configured on R2 and let's go ahead and we'll write this 